Well, you know, we've been discussing for the past response. couple of days how the rain has been affecting us and how climate change has been affecting us. And you want to know what we can do, what I can do, what you can do. We can do it together. And to help us discuss that, I want to welcome the managing director of the IAM movement, Jonathan Barkan. Good morning to you, Jonathan. Good morning, Rockers. How are you doing? So far, so good. How are you doing this morning? I am doing very well. You're breaking up a little bit, but um, I think you're hearing me okay, right? I am, I am. So we'll see if we can get through it. All right, okay. so tell me first of all, what is I Am Movement and what have you guys been doing for the past few years with regards to climate change? I Am Movement is a non-profit organization that was founded in 2014. Uh, it was really formed by a group of young people who came together at the time simply feeling that Trinidad and Tobago needed positive social and environmental change. At the time, that was our sole mission, really. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure you've heard by now, um, you know, Trinidad does have some very shocking statistics, being the second highest producer of greenhouse gases in the world per capita and whatnot. So what happened was we came together in 2014 and subsequently 2015, hosting the big people's climate marches in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, you know, and there's been quite a number of things over the years, over 100 climate talk events. We've produced various documentary films. But I know that what you would... Um, have me on to speak about here today is a bit on our climate adaptation side right and that is also a big area of activity that i'll share more you know yeah so the, the new program that you guys are doing is called the me we is yeah me we green that's correct it's called me we green tell me about me we green sure yeah so me we green is um it's actually me we green an education and empowerment program for climate change adaptation you know so for those of you all, you know, who may, might not know as much about climate change, and when we talk about climate change, we talk about sort of two key areas, one being mitigation and one being adaptation. And so on the mitigation side, that's when we really talk about how do we reduce climate change from happening. We're talking about sustainable energy, how to reduce emissions, reforestation, all that type of stuff, which is critical. But adaptation is a very, very critical sort of second arm of the, the sort of work to tackle climate change because it speaks to the fact that climate change is already happening. I'm not sure, you know, also how many viewers uh, would have known that the, um, the, I believe it was the sixth international report um, from the IPCC International Panel on Climate Change came out on Monday and it was the first one after eight years um, and it's a shocking report. We've known that um, climate change has been happening for a long time, but it's sort of been said, but yeah, we could still make it, we still have a chance to, to stop it altogether. This report conclusively said that um, changes are irreversible and that, um, you know, that yes, uh, yes, we can still do things and we absolutely have to do things. But ultimately, it said conclusively scientists from all around the world, including our Trinidad and Tobago's John Agard, Professor John Agard is a part of the International Panel on Climate Change, but have conclusively said for almost the first time that the world is already hotter and is going to get hotter. But the question is up to us how much how much hotter it gets. And therefore, it's just to say, to speak to the adaptation, which you spoke about, the Mirror Green program, yeah. what that really speaks about is the fact that climate change is happening, but how do we adapt to it? How do we deal with the effects? And so I also hear you mention at the start of the call about the rain and the floods and all of that. And um, Mirror Green is a, is a program that is really promoting the use of a unique plant species called vetiver grass as a simple, cost-effective tool to tackle many soil and water-related challenges. And simply, we know that, um, yeah, you can see that image right there on the screen. But, um, you know, I think we all know what the effects of rain can do. Yes, they cause flooding, but we also see along with rain serious land slippage, erosion, road failures everywhere. And I could tell you, I live in Santa Cruz. I'm seeing a lot of it along the road. Some serious yeah. failures taking place. I know Brasso Seco has faced it. We have cases of matlot and further out areas in, in past years that got cut off. So this is a simple, cost-effective tool. And... That little image you saw there, I'm sure you might have noticed the depth of the roots. Yeah, you know, so most it holds the soil root together. Root. Yes, most, most grasses, the roots grow one to two feet deep. And what makes this plant very unique is that the roots grow to 10 feet deep in the first two years. But Jonathan, um, people are going to be asking, you know, do I want this grass in my yard? Does it look like razor grass? What, is it, what does the top of it look like? I know the roots are effective, but what does yeah. the top of it look like? Because people are still interested in that part of it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a great question. So... It's actually a family to lemongrass. I'm sure most people in Toronto know lemongrass, yeah. fevergrass. So the good thing about it is, you know, you plant a piece of it and it stays as a clump, you know. So what you would call razor grass, what we know as razor grass is the thing that takes over the place, takes over farms, you know, something you don't really want to take over in your garden. But the good thing about vetiver grass is it's actually certified non-invasive, right. which means if you plant one plant, it's going to stay in one spot. Okay. Um, and then I think what you're showing on the screen now is the vetiver system. 
And although it's just a, it's just an illustration, I want to draw everybody's sort of attention to the again the root system you see on the right, which is ten feet deep. And I know Rokos before the image you had was an actual picture of the roots, but that is really the case of where they say a picture can speak a thousand words kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And once you see that picture, there's really not much more to be said because if you see that picture of roots sort of um you know towering over someone's head and you understand that that is what is under the ground holding up the banks holding up the roads and you recognize that, that simple tool could be used to protect your own property your own lands your own infrastructure it's very empowering to know that we have these simple green solutions that we could use that are cost effective to quote unquote adapt to climate change you know and the so, vetiver um, grass that this part of it the education about the vetiver grass is part of the miwi green program yeah that's correct yeah and i also just want to mention the miwi green uh, miwi green program is um is supported by the Green Fund, the Ministry of Planning and Development's Green Fund. Mm -hmm. And we're super, super excited and grateful to have it because uh, we began these sort of activities back in 2016 in Paramin under something which is called the Vetiver Education and Empowerment Project. Yeah, yeah, you can see it right there. And you know what, Jonathan? That's... I think that it definitely will because just last week, our brethren from Paramin was telling me about Vetiver, ironically. Correct. So I guess Correct. It, it really worked. But how can communities get involved and, and actually can entire communities get involved? Yes, absolutely. So again, what we're, what we're really excited about through this project is um, it's the first time we're being able to take this to the national level. So through the past partnerships with the likes of the UNDP GF Small Grants Program and the EMA and so on, we took it to Paramin, we took it to, um, to Sandy Grand International Quarries for the rehabilitation of quarries and so on. And so there's a sort of a piece by piece approach. Also, we have a very important project with the Inter-American Development Bank which played key foundational role to lead towards this green fund, um, EU Green program. But um, to answer your question about the, you know, communities, uh, whoever, you know, communities getting involved, what's really exciting is that this is actually the first program in the Western Hemisphere, which is promoting Vetive at the national level. And I say the Western Hemisphere because Vetive is used in all countries around the world, but to lesser or greater degrees. And it's really in some of the Asian countries like Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand, where they've totally recognized the value of this and they have fully national programs. There's actually a picture somewhere of the King of Thailand. I'm not kidding on the shady picture to show you here today, but the King of Thailand with a golden watering can watering a vetiver plant <laughs> in a sort of a symbolic way to kind of show the value of it. And you see them put it all over the highways and so on. Nice. So what's exciting is this project in Trinidad is the first one in the Western Hemisphere, which is a quote unquote national program. And we have eight communities formally involved, but we are also, you know, still responding to inquiries from beyond and, um, and, and, and assisting persons beyond that. But I'll see if I could quickly rattle off the main communities, the, the top eight communities we have um, under this program. So it's um, Cedros, Ikakas, you know, they face a lot of slippage erosion, Marugan and Virons, um, those roads also, the Sapote Clays, you, you drive on those roads, you don't see how wonky it is and there's slippage everywhere. Um, Lopino. Um, East Port of Spain is our year one communities. And then, yeah, you can see year two, Santa Cruz, Paramin, Cameron, Diego Martin, Brasso Seco, and Environs, and Forest Park, and Environs. All right, and, uh, fantastic. This is really... Mm -hmm. um, Jonathan, and... this is all the time we have for this morning. However, I do want to encourage people to head across to Facebook and Instagram at I Am Movement. You could get more information about being a part of the Miwi Green project and on the program and get the education thank you so much for the work that you guys have been doing at iron movement jonathan and cheers. please keep it up cheers rockers thanks a lot for having me yeah man no problem enjoy your day well that, that's jonathan barkan the managing director of i am movement and i think that that you know those projects are grows if it looks like lemongrass like the 10 feet deep into yeah. the ground well from that what, is from good what, because you're talking about binding the earth exactly that's exactly what it's and that's one of the things that we talk about when we say plant the land is like yeah. that, that's part you're of trying it to Bind the soil. Bind it together. So people use bamboo, people use the vetiver grass yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting, my brethren from Parliament was telling me about the vetiver grass and he was saying that, uh -huh. you know, yeah, he was saying that they use it now to bind and bind the boundaries especially. Yes. And, you know, keep the, the soil. And the thing is that, so you can cut it and, lo and lawn it out as usual. And, yeah, yeah, and the roots will stay as deep as it needs I to be. I love it. I love it. I think I'll plant it. I'm all into these things. Eh? That's nice. the truth. All right, guys. So when we come back, we're going to be heading across to Mexico. Not really, but we're going to take in some movies from Mexico. <laughs> Play Stay <the> tuned. <laughs>